Hi, I'm Chris, and this video shows you how to add real metallic highlights to your designs without cutting hot stamping foil. If you know hot stamping foils already, you know it's a great way to add metallic effects to your entire design. But what if we only want to decorate part of the design with metallic effects? In this video, I cover the design aspect as well as the application aspect, so you can use it with your own designs. But let's cover the basics first. Hot stamping foil come in different colors and patterns and you can become really creative with them. They stick only to the toner part of the design, which makes them totally self-weeding. Hot stamping foil will work on almost all toner colors, but it will work best with composite black. That's why you have the recommendation in the instructions. But it will also work on other full tone toner colors, like a couple of examples that you can see here on the right. What you want to avoid is pure white and very bright colors like sky blue. I have covered three different examples with two different softwares. The first one is just a text-based design with Affinity Designer. The second example is a more complicated vector design also with Affinity Designer. And the last example is photographic artwork made with Affinity Photo. Let's come to our first example, the text-based design. I put it here in a blue background so you can see it better. We have here two lines, one on top, one on the bottom. We have the outlines of the eye color text and also two-step and standard are supposed to be in gold. Let's start with the eye color text with the golden outline. So first thing we do is we just type in the text here eye color. Let's make it capital letters. And if we move up with our mouse here to the color palette, we have one side the inside color. And the other option here, this is the contour color or the stroke color. If we select stroke color, then we can just go to contour or to stroke, the third tab, and simply adjust the thickness of the stroke by using the slider. Let's keep the inside black. And we're going to select the stroke color, the outside. And just make it in yellow. Make it a little bit thicker. So now we can see the inside is black, the outside is a different color. Now the stroke and the filling are just one object. So they stick together. If you print it this way, it would print the outline as well as the filling. So that, that's something we don't want. So what we're going to do is we turn off the outline first. So if we move this around, we only move around the inside color. We're going to duplicate our layer, so we go on the right hand side, we click here, Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Now we have duplicated it. Then we click on this little arrow over here and our inside color is now on the outside. Let's make it yellow so we can see it better. If we now want to move the outside layer, we can. So it's completely independent from the inside fill. Now that we know how to separate the outside stroke from the inside fill, let's just take a look at the layers that I have over here. Let me just quickly delete these two layers because we don't need them anymore. Now that we have created all our different text and elements, we go over all, over all of our layers and just mark them all together. So like this one, two, three over here. We call it, we make a group and call it color. And these are all these layers that we don't want to foil later on. Our next step is to identify which layers we want to foil later on. So we just select them all. And when we are done, we just create another group. Just like so. We call this group gold or foil. Now we have divided our artwork into a foil part and into our color part. We can just click on our group and can drag it around. So this fits on the page as well. So we have below here the foil part and up there the, we call it color part. We turn off the background and then we're going to export it. I keep it on so you can see it a little bit better. But in your case, just make sure that you turn off the background before you export it. The artwork part is done. So now let's go over to the application part. Here's our printout. Put it in a black paper so you can see it a bit better. When I turn it around, you can see it's already married, so I did that work for you as well. So we can just separate the foil part from the color part, just roughly with a scissor into two halves. So this half we press down first, and this half goes on top. 
So here we have our two parts. We align them both on our t-shirt just to get the positioning right. Important is the larger part, in this case our collar part, and the foil part just goes on top. We slide the color part away because we press it later on. And we just fix it with some heat tape. So we press this for five seconds, cool to the touch. Now we peel it off, just remove the tape and roll it off as usual. Now we can select our foil color. I have silver, shiny gold and regular gold. Let's go with the shiny gold here. So we just cut off a little piece with a scissor, just a little square, like that. And then we place it on top of our design, fix it with some tape and it goes off to the press for another 15 seconds with high pressure. So you see here that I'm folding it over just to, to not lift it up when it's hot. Now it's cool to the touch. You can already see the indention. You can see where it sticks and it peels off very, very easily. So we go a little bit closer. This foil has a nice holographic effect. So it changes colors while you move it, which is pretty neat. Now that the foil is set, we're just gonna go over with our second part of the transfer, the colors. And I just orientate on the outlines here around the black letters, just here. If everything is fine, we're gonna fix it with some tape. So we press again, cool to the touch, roll it off carefully, as normal, nothing special here. And now we just have to finish it with our T-seal and it's ready to go. So coming over to example number two, here we have a more detailed, more complicated vector design for pirates, some text in there. And we want to have the earrings and the handles that are golden in actual gold. So we can go over here on the right hand side to our layers and we can just browse through and look for the parts that we want to isolate. So here, for example, we have the bandana, different parts, different shades of red. So if you click on it, it gets highlighted in our image itself. We can turn it on and off, so it appears and disappears, so we know exactly what part we are working with. So let's scroll down, let's see if we find something that looks more like the handles or like the earrings. If you have too many elements, or you just can't find it in the, in the layers panel, just zoom in and double click on it and it should show up on the right hand side over here where we can find the element in gold. Another way to isolate that color is to find an element in that particular color. Go to selections and then select same and then select filling color. And then everything that has the same color is now selected. So we browse through here, we should see that a couple of parts are selected that have the same color. Once you've found all the layers that you want to foil it on, just duplicate them. So we, here we have them. And just move them around to see if you really have everything that you want to duplicate. So we have the earrings, we have the handles. We just put them in the same place. We take these duplicates and create a group and put them all in there. We can call this group gold or foil or anything else, just so we can keep them apart. The original image, we're gonna select our gold parts, go to blend mode and select erase. We do this for all the parts that we have duplicated. And then we can see, okay, they are gone. They will not be printed anymore. Then we select our gold layer just to make sure that everything that we want to have in gold is on a separate layer. And this seems to be the case. Perfect. So we can move on. So we turn off the gold layer, like so. And we also turn off the background. So now we have just the color layer with the white text and everything. We go to export and export it as a PNG, PDF, whatever we prefer. So we have our color layer already. After we have separated the color layer, our next step is to select all the layers that we don't want to print on our foil layer or onto our gold layer. So we just deselect everything. We can do this via the group, select the texts. Now we have just left with this little gold particle over here. 
we can do now is we can just copy it and make a bunch of copies and put them all on the same sheet and export this again. Just make sure that you turn off the background as well before you export it. So coming to the application phase, this here is the color layer, everything besides the gold. This here is the gold layer. I used the entire page and I can just use them to print other copies of the shirt. When it comes to positioning, we use the same technique as previously with the text-based design. Our gold layer goes down, then the color layer goes down. The color layer is more significant, takes up more space. So we use that to center our gold layer. So we're happy with our design, center it. So this is the place that we want to have. And then we just pull away the color layer and fixate this part here with some heat tape. So we press this part for five seconds. Peel it off when it's cool to the touch with a slight gentle roll. Then it comes off super easy. We have different colors to choose from. So I go with the standard gold, like a more matte toned down gold version. So we cut off a little piece from the roll, just like that, super convenient. And just fixate it with some tape and we're ready to press it again. Fold over when lifting from the press to prevent lifting prematurely and when cool to the touch, like here. After pressing the second layer on top, just peel it carefully in a rolling movement, like over here. Finish it up with T-Seal and you will have metallic highlights on a colorful design. Starting with example number three, here we just create a new document, A4 or letter size in this case. You can see the measurements over here, 300 dpi, CMYK, transparent background, and push create. So first thing I'm gonna do with pretty much every design, I create a square, drag it over the entire canvas, so I have a background that I can toggle on and off as I want to, and I'm going to change the color to black. I push that little lock, so I can't move the background anymore, and we just name it background. We bring our image in. You can see it's very small, not the best quality. We just drag it to size for the sake of the video. But this is something that you actually should not use because it will become grainy. So the image is resized and positioned. And the reason I want to use this image is because I want to have these lips in gold color. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna rasterize the entire layer. Now that the image is rasterized, we can use the selection brush tool on the left side and we can select the lips and isolate them. Just click on it, we select pixel size. The smaller the number, the smaller the size is, and the more precise it is. We zoom in and just brush over the lips. And we can see that there is a little form that follows our mouse. Just go all around the lips until everything is covered with these blurry lines. Just be careful to not overdo it, otherwise you have to correct it up later on. A little bit further. Now over the middle, so it selects the middle as well. That looks good so far, let's zoom in. Here we can fine tune it and make the edges a little bit smoother. Let's fast forward this. And once we are happy with our selection, we push Command or Control J to create a duplicate layer. Let's rename our duplicated layer and call it Lips. And after we've done that, we just select the layer below again and we just hit Backspace to delete the lips below. I toggle my layers on and off just to make sure that I have been successful with selecting my layers. We push Command or Control D on our keyboard to deselect so the jittery lines go away. So now we have successfully separated our lips on a separate layer, but if we would print them this way, we would just print a large block of color. So we would print the black parts and the yellow parts equally, which doesn't look nice. So we're going to half tone it or to rasterize it within Affinity Photo. To do this, we're going to bring the contrast up to achieve better results. And we're also going to group the contrast layer 
and the lips together in one group. In order to rasterize it, we first need to make our image grayscale, means black and white. Then we are going to deselect all layers that we don't want to rasterize, so the background and the main face. And then we're gonna hit Merge Visible. Now we can delete the contrast layer as well as the black and white layer because we don't need them anymore. And we click on the hourglass and scroll down until we see a selection that's called Halftone. This menu here pops up and we have different buttons and sliders that we can play with. I like something between 8 and 12 as a dot size and the angle should be around 30 to 45 degrees if we are choosing dots. Just play around with the sliders and see which setting you prefer. You also have the options for lines, but if you choose lines, make sure that the lines go straight up vertical like 0 or 90 degrees. Let's keep the dots for now and we just close it with an X. So our next step is to select the halftone layer that we just created over here and rasterize to mask. Now everything that was black is now removed, everything that was light colored is now rasterized or halftoned. Let's turn on the black background as well as the main image. As we don't want to foil directly onto light colored areas or white areas, we're gonna darken the lips, which we can do with the black and white option and we just drag all the levers all the way to the left and our lips get much much darker which is great to help the foil stick to the toner. If we want we can export our main image like that with the lips missing and export the lips separately but I'm going to rasterize the entire image. Just a quick fast forward and our entire image is rasterized and we also can see that the little lips that we have over here easily fit somewhere else on the page. So let's just move them quickly. So now we have moved the lips on the side of the neck. Now we just turn off the background so we can see what we actually will be printing, which is not a lot, just a couple of dots, so it's very toner saving. And we're gonna go to File, Export it and print from ProRip. Here we are at the application stage. We have everything printed onto one page because it could fit the lips just on the side. We cut them out. When it comes to positioning, we use the same trick as before. We place the larger sheet down first. Although we don't press it immediately, we just use it to get an idea where to position our lips. Once we found our place, we just pull away the larger image and press down the lips. After a five seconds press, we wait until our design is cold. When it is, we just peel it off. And to foil it, we can even use a little scrap piece that we had left over from another design. Another 15 seconds press and we just peel it when it's cold again. We position our main image on top, which is super easy because it's a clear foil. And press it again for at least 15 seconds. After it's completely cooled off, peel it very carefully in a very flat angle, just to roll it off with these fine dots to keep all the dots on the shirt and you're pretty much done. Just a quick finishing press with your T-seal and you're done. Super soft shirt. I hope you liked this video. If you did and you learned something, please leave a like on YouTube and also consider subscribing. Thank you and until next time, bye bye.